So last week, mind frame, big question. Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. So last week, I had this thing. It's just a uh, closet organizer. It's made of cloth, a bunch of cubbies. You can put lightweight stuff like shirts or blankets or whatever else in there. And I just hung it on my PVC clothing rack and my plan is to take it with this camping to hold clothes or other things like maybe buns or soft foods that uh, would work perfectly in this. Now these aren't terribly expensive. I've seen a few that seemed a bit overpriced, but for the most part, they're around 20 bucks. So not that expensive, but not that cheap either. So I got the idea thinking that, you know, there might be a way to make a really cheap version of this because my local dollar store happens to have these cloth baskets that are essentially one cell of this six celled organizer. So what if we just got six of these, six bucks, well, 624, right? 624 with 6% Michigan tax. It probably wouldn't be that hard to just take six of these and attach them together in exactly the same way. Now I've already done a proof of concept and I'd say that looks pretty promising. And all I did to attach it was just spray the two sides with some 3M90. And that's a pretty good bond. You're not going to be putting anything that heavy in here anyway. So I don't see the need to do much more than just that. When I first started thinking about it, I thought maybe doing like grommets in the four corners. I felt like those might rip out. And it is peeling on the edges just a bit where there wasn't some adhesive. So I mean, you could put like a strap across and attach it here. If you had a really good sewing machine, you could just sew that, very similar to the way they've done it here. But honestly, for six bucks, for something really quick and simple, really, the bulk of your money for this project is going into a can of 3M90. But it holds really well. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and glue the other four together just like this. And then the only thing left to do will be working on the hanging mechanism. Now one quick modification I want to make before gluing these together is removing this handle. And it's not on there securely by any means, so we just need to peel back. And I find a razor blade works great. Especially a nice sharp one. Just very gently touch the thread, cuts it right off. I actually use this as a seam ripper in most cases, over an actual seam ripper. I didn't have one for a while, so this is what I turned to. It makes a great seam ripper, seam cutter, really. So yeah, you wanna be a badass seamstress, exchange your, your boring seam ripper for a sharp, intimidating razor blade. Just pull that thread taut, barely even touching it. It just cuts it right through and snaps it off. You didn't damage your actual piece, pull out all the threads, all right. I'm gluing an opening to an opening. Just use some of the packaging so I don't get glue all, all over the sawhorse. Not that it matters, but that way uh, my next two won't stick to the sawhorses where there was spillover glue. So. Now very much like contact adhesive, you want to let this sit and then almost dry. And once it gets pretty tacky, you just slap the two together and then you have a really strong permanent bond. Just make one more set of two, and then glue two to two, and then glue two to four.
two to two. Two to four. That's opening to opening, right? No, that's back to opening. I would have messed the whole thing up. All right. Check that out. I think that is really cool. So yeah, again, I mean, if you don't think that that bond's gonna be strong enough, you could even just take the uh, strips of handle that you cut off and attach those, either sew them on, glue them on, across there, and that would look pretty good. It would match the same kind of type of material on the inside. You could try doing grommets or something in there, but again, you're not gonna be putting that much weight. This whole surface has been glued, and this stuff has a lot of holding power. Now again, this stuff, 3M90, this is where most of your money went if you had to buy a new bottle. So yeah, the $6, $6.34 with Michigan 6% tax goes up to about, well, for the whole bottle it's about 12, but I only used maybe a third, so there's still quite a bit left in here. So third of 12, why am I doing so much math? Four, oh, it's four. Wait, a third of 12 is four. So 10 bucks, so basically, you've saved half the amount of money plus your time. So if you're doing it just to strictly save money, as with most DIY projects, unless it's a product that you can't actually buy, there's usually not a huge financial advantage to do it. But there is the advantage of making something yourself, being able to customize it with as few or as many cubbies as you'd like. There's different colors, not a whole lot. They have this tan, black, which they were out of, and a gray, which they were out of. And they have different sizes, so if you didn't want the cubbies square, they have like half sizes ones, half sizes ones, half sized ones. I think that sounds better. That you could use. So there's a whole bunch more customization you can do by making it yourself. You can do a large cubby and a half cubby and a, you could put them vertically. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff you can do. Now there's one more step to do and we need to make it hangable. Now this model used like this wire top with these two hangers, which I was thinking of doing. I have some hardboard here that I'm gonna cut out to make a more rigid top. And then I thought I could just drill some holes and stick like a broken hanger through it and attach it with a screw or a pin or something. But actually, more like this model, which just uses a Velcro strap, I think is the better way to go. And I think I can just use one of the inserts that we're not using. These would normally go in the box to make up the hard bottom. That's how they can fold these and package them flat. I think one of these is just the exact same size almost as this handle. We'll just break up the cardboard a bit. We'll secure that on there. Attach some Velcro. And I think that'll work great. This will be way more universally fitting over the hooks, which I had to bend to fit my larger pipe, which I have now replaced with a thinner pipe. And again, I think we'll just use the adhesive that I have on the Velcro. If it's not holding, I can always add some more adhesive or sew them on, but we'll just do the easiest way first and see how everything works. I'm just kind of rolling it up, making that uh, cardboard a bit softer. Yeah, I might as well. I was thinking I would cut down the Velcro, but I'll just use the whole width. There's no point in just making it slightly thinner. Same thing, we'll do the outside. Now again, I'm not sure how strong that'll be. That's basically just however this fabric was attached to the cardboard, which it really isn't. And there's not much here, but I think with how much we're using, I think it'll be okay. Otherwise, it really would not be that hard just to run this through the sewing machine. Maybe it would just be worth it to, to sew that, to stitch that real quick. If it wouldn't be that hard, it makes sense, because it'd be, it'd be a bit harder once it's attached. So this side I'm not as worried about, because it's actually on the cardboard, but we'll just stitch both sides, just run a stitch. Oh, I want to be so lazy and just leave it though. I think it'll be fine. Oh, go. Part of my issue with 
my laziness, quote unquote, just that some of this stuff is not, most of this stuff is not easily accessible. If I could just walk up here and use it because everything was clean and organized, that'd be a different story. One day, at least it has black thread in it. Nah, my dog wants to be let in. Oh, why was, why is it, oh, no, okay. Okay, what's going on there? Damn, it does not like, all right, good enough. All right, so my sewing machine was not having it, but I at least got a stitch through the one part where I was kind of concerned. Figured I'd try and not be lazy, and then my equipment doesn't work. That's just the ongoing struggle. Once you're finally motivated to do the thing, then you find out you can't do the thing because the stuff you need to do the thing with isn't working right. So keep saying, and do it anyway. So we don't need this handle anymore. All right, so I wanna glue this in here as well, but I don't need it to be a super strong adhesion. So I'm just only gonna put uh, spray adhesive on the one side. Just a little bit. Just to keep it from moving and just staying in place and separating. You can see the difference it makes only gluing one side of the surface but again, I don't need it that good. Now, for this part, I could just use another piece of the hardboard, but I just, again, want to do just the easy way, and I think I'm just gonna throw some screws in here from the underside, you know, top down underside. So I just wanted this to be a bit thicker, so I think I'm gonna just try and take a piece of this scrap two by four and make a strip out of this. I thought about just adding like a strip of adhesive here and here just to help hold it a bit better but again there's nothing really holding this to the cardboard so that's kind of just it's not going to do much so oh and again don't put it on the wrong way although a bit of glue would make everything easier to uh just handle so it might make sense just for that reason so this should be just up and down That's a pretty precision tip. That's not too bad. Right, so if I drill down from the bottom, the pilot holes, I don't know where them, they go through. Let's not drill into the center of my hand. Did you catch it? Did you catch what I did? That's my bottom. So I can either move that or I can cut another piece of hardboard. I think I'm just gonna cut another piece of hardboard and just leave, well, cause that's stuck in there now. Let's cut another piece of hardboard. Any crisis averted. Another option, if you don't have any kind of grinding apparatus. If it's a small protrusion like that, that'll work just fine as well. So my one and a quarter inch pipe now has half inch end fitting into the original one and a half inch 90. I'd say still just as strong. Now the smaller hangers fit way better. Should be small enough to go. But that's last week's video. Let's see how this works.
Oh, it's even too tall. That's okay. That works really well. Perfect excuse to just show quickly how we can just extend it, the height, just a little bit more after the fact. Well, I'd say this one is a huge success. It came out awesome. And if I'd use the black bins, you'd have a hard time telling which is what is where. But yeah, this is great. That was super easy. We can make it as short or as long or as too long as we want. I think the Velcro attachment works great. We didn't even have to get an extra piece of fabric. We could just use one of the unused pieces that we were just gonna probably throw away anyway. And speaking of those, just to add a little bit more rigidity to the shelves, it's only one thin piece of cardboard, but add all three together. And of course, if you wanted a really rigid shelf, we could cut out more hardboard and put that on each one. Hey, Dsauce, future Nick here. So I actually did go ahead and cut hardboard for all the shelves. I also went ahead and just glued them in and made it permanent. And you can see it really makes the whole thing that much more rigid and level. They don't bend like they do when it's just the plastic or cardboard. And even with the additional weight of all the hardboard, which it is pretty dense and can weigh quite a bit when you get a lot of it together, the Super 90 adhesive is still holding strong, especially at the top where it has the additional weight of all the below cubbies. So this is really a great addition to our DIY closet organizer, as well as to the ones that you might purchase already. Just cutting in some hardboard and adding that on top of the shelf really adds all that rigidity and makes these shelves just a lot nicer to use and you don't have to worry about them bowing or just stuff coming and falling out. So I went ahead and cut sheets for all these as well, but I haven't pulled the plug and decided to glue those in yet or not. But, but even not glued, it's still a great upgrade. Now when I was at the dollar store getting the cubbies, I did look around for a dollar store solution to the hardboard. Not that it was my goal to make this a dollar store only project, but if they had something that was cheap and easy to work with, that would have been a great option. But the dollar store really doesn't have very many big rigid items. I had this. Everything there is pretty small and flimsy and anything that might be big enough and seem like it's rigid, like this basket, once you cut out the plastic it pretty much lose all that structure that the sides are giving it and you wouldn't have much more stability than just what's already in there. But the one thing they have that might actually work is foam core, which would be an upgrade from cardboard. It's super light so it won't add any additional weight and definitely does give you a nice level shelf. So for anything light that you're going to put on it, like clothing or hamburger buns, it's going to work great. It's going to give you a nice level shelf. You're not going to have any sagging, but if you put anything too heavy, it's just going to crack and then you're not much better off than anything else. So this is an extreme example, but anything much heavier than some socks or some hamburger buns and it's going to give. Whereas our hardboard holds it like a champ. And again, an additional 10 pounds, that super 90 adhesive isn't even budging. Another option might be corrugated plastic. Again, it's really lightweight, easy to work with, and pretty inexpensive. And if you cut two sheets, glue them together and rotate it so that the corrugations go across each other, that would make a really stable surface that could hold quite a bit of weight. I, of course, went with the hardboard. It's pretty cheap, really strong, super easy to cut with power tools, though you can cut it with a hand tool or even score it on both sides with the utility knife and break it for a moderately decent cut. But wait, there's even more. So remember like 10 minutes ago when I made this thing and it was a little bit longer than I was expecting? Well, I came up with a way to make it adjustable. To start, I drilled a hole through the bottom four shelves. Now you could do it through all of them, but I figured the bottom four would be good enough for any adjustments I might want to make. Now when I did this, as you can see, I just drilled through it once it was all assembled. If I was to do it again, I would stack the hardboard before assembly and drill through them. 
That way there'd be a lot less chip out and it would just be a lot cleaner. But this worked. And now all I have to do, borrow some hardware from the DIY Gorillapod video. Just take a bolt and a washer, putting it through the hole, holding up the shelf, another washer and a nut, tighten that up. And now our six shelf closet organizer is a four shelf closet organizer, but it still has two more shelves should we ever need them. So there are two really great upgrades, modifications to your DIY closet organizer or to the store-bought one because this mod would work just as well on one of these. Now, speaking of store-bought ones, guess what I saw at Five Below? Yup, a six shelf closet organizer for five bucks. Five dollars and 30 cents with Michigan 6% sales tax. So a whole dollar cheaper and pre-made than my DIY $6 solution. And it even has the Velcro style hanger, which as you know, I prefer. All right, well, one thing I can be happy about, their solution, there's not even cardboard in there. That's just fabric. So minus one for that. The cubbies, definitely smaller than any of these, so minus two for that. Otherwise, not bad. And of course, you can give it the hardboard treatment, and that'll improve it tenfold. So like I said, or will say, but already said, DIY isn't always about just saving money. It's about making something yourself and getting to control what you get and what you make, from size and shape to color and function. For instance, a plus that I think our DIY version has over some of the store-bought ones is that since we use these baskets, they have rigid edges. So that means when you fold it up, you get a really nice accordion and stacking effect. And it's actually really clean. Whereas these, they just have fabric. So it just kind of mushes together. And you really have to kind of take your time to squeeze them in. I think that says a lot. This kind of turned into two videos in one, but with that, I'll return you to your previous outro, already in progress. Seriously, I am really excited about this one. I think this is an awesome DIY project. And I think it's really easy. I'm super excited with how strong the, the 3M90 is. That's all it really needs. I don't see any reason to do any more work to make those joints any more secure than they already are. Everything is holding great. I mean, these are just cardboard as well. It's all just cardboard and fabric. And with this, we have the potential of taking cheap cardboard and fabric dollar store and just adding a few extra materials and making it really hardcore. Yeah, look at that. A nice sturdy shelf. I definitely, yeah, I think I will. I'll cut out a few more of those. Have nice strong shelves for no reason other than just can. I'm sure you can tell I'm excited about this one. I hope you're just as excited. And my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas, and the D stands for Duncan. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. This thing, and it turned out to be a little bit long, but it, with that, I'll return you to your regularly scheduled. Uh, regularly, regularly. That is difficult. Why is it difficult? Regularly. I can't say it any better than that. I'll return you to your previous outro, already in progress. See? Different way. Reg regularly.